It is completely underwater, which it is, and not much string is underwater to really mess it up. And it's gonna be somewhere around there. So I've got 53. 53.7. Mass. All right, so from this, we should be able to figure out what the volume is. Uh, before, we were trying to figure out what the effective mass would be, but this time we actually found the effective mass and we can find that. And you're cranking on the calculator there. Did you figure it out already? Uh, Are you doing something else? All right, I know that the effective mass is going to be equal to the actual mass minus one gram per cubic centimeter times the volume of the block. And so I have 53.7 is equal to 85.2 minus the volume of the block. And so what is the volume? Thirty-one point five. What'd you get? Thirty-one point five. What would the units be? I don't know if I've been fast and loose with units here, but And as a hint, my volume in cubic meters is about 0.1. Centimeters cubed? Yes, it is. Okay. And it comes from the cubic centimeters right there. All right. Uh, if it is indeed a cube, what would be the length of each side? So I would expect it to be somewhere around that, and considering the meter sticks are no longer in here, we'll use a track. It is 3.158 centimeters. My eyesight is that good. Now I can tell that it, from this that it's somewhere just slightly over three. It's over. It's in between 3.1 and 3.2. You did a measurement of one of these cubes. Yes. 
and it was something again somewhere in that range. Yeah. Uh, complete side note: any of you drink Pepsi? I would like a two-liter bottle. Is that a yes? You'll take it if no one else will. We ordered takeout and it came with the food, but we don't. We're. I don't do caffeine, and my wife doesn't really do sodas. So. Okay. Onward. Next up in the whole example, dealing with all of this stuff. Uh, are there any questions before we get to diving to it? Was that the aluminum block? Yes. Yeah, we had gotten 3.16 on all sides. Boom. Nice. Occasionally, physics demonstrations work. All right, diving Tony. I call it diving Tony because uh, years ago in it was one of the prizes that you got from a box of Frosted Flakes. Uh, it was Tony and not an eyedropper. Eyedropper works actually a little bit better than Tony did. But it's the, some years I got better sleight of hand than others. I'm not gonna bother, but I'm just, come on, there we go, make it drop. Besides just my incredible mental powers to do that, why did it drop? Did you see what I did with my hand? I squeezed the bottom. So you squeeze the bottle, the stopper falls. And there's some ideal where it will just stay hovering there. Why does squeezing the bottle cause the dropper to fall? Because it increases the density of the water slightly enough for it to be heavier. All right, if I take that water and I put it down 4,000 meters below the surface of the ocean, the density of the water changes by 1.8%. My little bit of squeezing right there, you think is I, I'm going to say it's not sufficient enough to change the density of the water. I can make the claim that water we're going to, is close enough to incompressible. Change the pressure in the bottle. All right, so I changed the pressure in the bottle. How I wasn't touching the stopper. How did I change the pressure in the bottle? So that does bring up an important principle here that we actually used last week called Pascal's principle. Yeah, that Pascal, please. Is that when you apply pressure to a incompressible fluid, that that pressure is extended throughout. So I was only touching the surface, well actually I was touching the bottle which touched the water, but when that pressure from the bottle exerted pressure on the water and the water had nowhere to go, that pressure was distributed throughout. So external pressure on a Incompressible substance. So, my applying pressure to the bottle 
cause pressure to be sent throughout the entire, all the work. But why does the dropper fall? There's air in the dropper. Okay, and? Well, if, if the pressure is distributed throughout, then I'm applying just as much pressure on top as the bottom. So do you want to like extend are, it or are you, I mean, are you just applying pressure to the whole dropper effectively, which then compresses the air inside of it? And? Which increases the density of the air. Increasing the density, of, then, yes, it would increase the density of the air uh, I would contend that the air density is minimal. Because ultimately, what is the mass? I mean, I've got weight acting down, and I got some buoyant force acting up sitting right there. This weight is mg, and m is really mass of the stopper plus mass of the rubber top plus mass of the glass. So even if the air compresses, oh, plus mass of the air. So even if the air compresses, the mass of the air is not changing. Unless it's got a bad top and the gas, you get gas, you can see gas bubbles coming out. seen these before? Okay. What's happening? It's been like before. Okay. If it's filling with water, why does it fall? Because it effectively increases the density of the object. Uh, if you want to look at it from that point of view, we have to throw in one more thing here, plus mass of the water in stopper times G. Okay, so from that point of view, we are increasing the, the overall weight by having more water in there. And the buoyant force stays the same. But if we don't include the water as this part of the stopper, because if I pulled the stopper out, dried it off, you wouldn't go, oh, that, that's not a complete stopper. It doesn't have, or a eye dropper. It doesn't have, eye dropper is probably a better word. I don't know where that came from. Dropper. So if we got rid of the water as part of the mass of it, how is it it's going to fall then? And what Michael said is what are the ways of looking at it? I'm hoping for you to look at it slightly differently. But if we look at it from a force point of view, the mass of the air is not changing, just the density of the air. All right, so 
What is buoyant force, conceptually? I have an object here of some volume, volume of object in a fluid. What is the buoyant force? The magnitude of the buoyant force? The density times gravity times. And the, the, it's getting more specifically here. Density of Yes, it is. It's the mass of what, though? Right, density of fluid times the volume of the object. Situation, or am I going to get a, a mass without any other qualifiers, really? Well, it's badly worded, but just wait. If they're the same, if the volumes are the same. All right. So if the volume of the fluid is the volume of the object, you get the mass of a, a straight up mass. So this mass right here is the mass of the water that would have been here had this object not been put into the place. That is the mass of the water that's gotten pushed out of the way because you've stuck something into it. So in the case of the eyedropper, as water fills into it, you're displacing less water. Because you're displacing less water, because there's less water getting pushed out of the way because of the stopper itself. This is where I I don't have the water as part of the mass of the stopper. Because less water is being pushed out of the way, it's filling in some of that space that we weren't filling in before, the buoyant force drops. And therefore, weight becomes more dominant and it will fall. Question C.
if I put a pin in it, what's going to happen? Pop. Why? All right. First off, pop. I'm, when you say pop, I'm thinking the sound. You'll hear the well, out of the bag. First. Why do you hear any sound? Because of the release of the tension. Keep going. suddenly if I took a rubber band and I snapped it and I cut it am I gonna get that loud bang I guess not. what causes sound is it the air moving from a higher pressure environment to an equilibrium environment uh, which question were you answering the first one of why there's a pop yeah okay uh, so why is the pressure inside, if it's floating right here, and I've got all sorts of equilibrium going on, isn't the pressure inside the balloon the same as the pressure outside the balloon? Why is it not the same? Because the air has been compressed by the, uh, the tension of the surface of the balloon. Why is the balloon not getting bigger then? Okay, I'll, I'll go with that. But the look you gave was one of, didn't I just say that? I'm just saying how to adjust the voice. So if you look at the balloon, you do have forces going both ways. You have the particles hitting against the inside, particles coming in the outside, and so occasionally I'll see that you know the balloon will expand until the pressure is equalized. They don't. Uh, so, if you're looking at a point on the surface right here, you have this force coming from the gases inside. So, I guess if I look at it, it's a decimally small piece of it. P inside dA. I have this force coming from the outside, P outside dA. But I also have the tension from the latex. 